Okay, so in our previous video, we looked at just generally double replacement reactions. Now we're going to hone into three different types of double replacement reactions. The first one is a formation of a precipitate. Okay, so a precipitate is going to be where we form something that is what we call insoluble. Okay, so solubility tells us whether something will dissolve in water or whether it will not dissolve in water. We say something is insoluble, okay? When we do that, we say, well, it will not dissolve in our water, okay? So if we were to take that compound and try and add it to water and have it break up into its ions and dissolve, it would not happen, okay? So we must form something that's insoluble for us to get a precipitate, okay? So let's look at an example reaction. Let's say we have silver nitrate, Okay, and we would see based on our solubility rules that nitrate ions are always soluble, so our silver nitrate would be soluble, so we would record it as aqueous. That's going to re uh, react with sodium chloride. Okay, sodium chloride is group 1A is sodium. It's always soluble based on our solubility rules. So again, we're going to look at, well, what are we going to form? Silver combining with chloride, sodium combining with nitrate as our two new products. So we end up getting silver chloride and sodium nitrate. Okay, and so now once we've identified what the compounds are, we need to identify are they soluble or are they insoluble? Will this new compound formed stay dissolved in water or will it come out and form a precipitate? Well, we go and we look at the solubility rules for something like sodium. Group 1A ions are always soluble no matter what they're partnered with. Nitrate ions, again, always soluble no matter what ion they are partnered with. So therefore, we can say, well, it is aqueous. Okay, it's going to be soluble and stay dissolved in our solution. Whereas, if we look at silver and chloride, chloride with bromide iodide, those three halogens, okay, are, will always be soluble unless they're partnered with a few ions. Okay, one of those is silver. So since chloride is combined with silver in this compound, we would see that compound is actually insoluble. So we would classify that as insoluble and we can record it by saying it's going to form a solid. Okay? And so therefore that would be our precipitate that forms. We form this insoluble compound. It cannot stay dissolved in our solution. Since it cannot stay dissolved in our solution, it's going to come out and it's going to form that precipitate. So now we know that this precipitate formation, that is our driving force for this reaction to happen. It's what's making it move forward. It's what's making us see that we're forming something new. It's the formation of this precipitate silver chloride. So we see as we're trying to identify precipitate reactions, we go through the normal, figure out what are our two products that are formed from our double replacement reaction. Then we got to look at those two new compounds. Are they both soluble? Is one of them insoluble? Are we forming something that will not stay dissolved in water? Once we identified, like our silver chloride, it's something that will not stay dissolved in water, then we can go ahead and say, well, that's our precipitate. That's what would be our driving force in this reaction. So continue with us in the next video. We're going to look at another driving force. We're going to look at acid-base neutralization reactions and where those form water. That formation of the water is the driving force in that specific reaction.